Okay, let's get started. All right, Miss Meyer students, I have my oil pastels, the ones that we're gonna be using today. You'll need a white pastel, a brown, an orange, or it could even be red. That's gonna be the color of one of your fish. One light blue, one dark blue, and any type of green pastel. So we know that blue and orange are complementary colors. All that means is they're opposite each other on the color wheel. And so when we make our art, it's going to be really bright and exciting. Let's get these oil pastels out of the way and let's go ahead and get started. I've got a little smudge on my paper. Guess what? That's a little mistake, but it's okay to have happy little accidents. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna keep on going. So this is gonna be our drawing part for the day. And I'm gonna show you how to get to this part. And then we're gonna keep moving. The most important thing for us to do is not to worry about how it comes out and to be happy with what we're doing. Sometimes we get a little frustrated when we work. Our best thing to do is to just keep going. All right, I'm gonna use a pen, but you guys are going to use your pencils because you can erase um, as you need to. I would encourage you though not to erase because erasing takes a lot of time. So it's just best to keep on going. And then at the end, if you need to make little um, erasing marks, you can. Okay, so this is our paper. It's nine by nine, it's a square. And right in the middle, I'm gonna put my finger because this is gonna help me start where I need to go. So I don't wanna be boring. I'm not going to do it right in the middle. I'm gonna move my finger just down a little tiny bit. And I want you guys to do the same thing. And this is where I'm gonna start the small heels on my paper. Right on the edge, I'm going to make a very low line. Do you guys see that? It's not high, it's not flat, but it's a low curve line. So I'm gonna make a low curve line. I'm gonna go up, back down and off my paper. Try not to make it too high. We're not trying to make Mount Everest. We're just doing the best that we can. I'll wait for you guys. You are doing amazing. Remember, try not to do too much erasing. Awesome. Okay, let's keep going. Do you see these rolling waves that are underneath the rolling hill? Let's work on making those. So what I want to do is I want to stretch out the shape. Watch first before you do. I'm going to make the shape of somebody took the letter U and stretched it out. So I'm not here where my hill is at. I've gone down a little bit. So you can actually put your finger there to help get you started. And then I'm going to make a curve that goes up, not too high, but not too low either. And then I'm gonna make a curve line that goes down to make that U shape. That's making my waves. I'm gonna keep going all the way across my paper stretch it out the best that I can. It's okay if it's not perfectly straight up and down. You are doing amazing. Do not worry about that. So if these are waves, who can tell me what this bottom part will be? That's right, that's the ocean. So we're gonna make some kelp, we're gonna make some seaweed, and we're gonna make the ocean floor.
let's go ahead and get started. You've got your waves here. You've got your rolling hill. You're doing it with pencil. I'm doing it with pen so you can see. And then let's make some seaweed over here in this corner of our paper. Let's scoot that up just a smidge so I can see. <laughs> and let's go ahead and make the letter V but upside down and tall. I made the letter V. I made it upside down and tall. Tall and skinny but upside down. Now I'm going to make some more kelp, but this time I'm going to curve the V. The upside down V now is going to be curved, and it's not going to be as tall as the first one. You can do the same thing one more time. This time I'm going to curve it towards the left, and it's going to be really tall. Look at that. You're doing amazing. Now, second graders, let's take a look. Sometimes in art, we have things that we draw that we only see parts of because our eye, we can't see through things, but we can see parts of things. So let's go ahead and draw some seaweed where we just see a part of it. So in between the first and the second seaweed, I'm going to draw another line that you just see a portion of the seaweed. Did you guys get a chance to do that? You're doing amazing. All right, now I'm gonna come over to the right side of my paper. And this time, instead of drawing seaweed that looks like upside down these, I'm gonna draw some sea kelp. To draw sea kelp, I'm gonna draw a wiggly line that goes up from the bottom of my paper, almost to the top of my curved wave line. Don't go all the way, but just go almost all the way, leave a little bit of a space, maybe this size of like your thumb turned on its side. Great, you're doing awesome. Next, you can, and if you need to, you can raise your hand and ask Miss Myers, Miss Myers, I'm not ready to go on to the next step. Can you please pause the video? And she'll be more than happy to do that for you. But I'm gonna move on to the next step. So right next to my curvy line that goes almost up to my wave, I am going to make another line next to that one going the same way. I'm just gonna call it something really fancy, and you don't have to remember this word, but it's called a parallel line. Those two lines are parallel next to each other. That means they both go in the same direction and they never touch. Nope, they never do. I'm going to make a little curved U next to my two lines, and now they're no longer parallel. Now they're just a wiggly line that's connected. All right, let's keep going. To make our sea kelp, you can make a curved shape like a C or a teardrop coming out from your curved line. And then I'm going to move down a little bit and do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to continue this pattern until I'm at the bottom of my sea kelp. It's okay if you go off the page with it. Whatever you do will be amazing. And then, so this sea kelp over here is not lonely and all by itself. 
I'm going to do the same thing right next to it. Maybe this time this one will not be as tall. I've made one wiggly line, another wiggly line, very close together that are parallel, but then I close it at the top. Next, I'm going to do my little C that's kind of closed. It's almost like someone took a zero and kind of stretched it out, right? And I'm gonna do the same thing all the way across. Once again, you guys are doing amazing. Right here at the bottom, we want to have the ocean floor. So I'm going to just come around from the side of my seaweed and make a line over to my sea kelp. All right, let's move on to the top part of our image and then we'll come back and work on our fish and our other little creatures in the sea. Right above this curved line, the one that we started at the very beginning, our small rolling hills, that would be a nice place to maybe put a palm tree or two. So let's go ahead and do that. Before we do that though, I think it would be a good idea for us to place our mountains. That way our palm trees don't get carried away. So I'm gonna take my finger again and go to the middle of my paper, halfway between the top and halfway between the bottom. And I'm gonna scoot my finger up just a little. Nice job. Let's go ahead and now make three hills. So we have to get our hills from here all the way over to the other side. Not too tall and not too skinny. So the first hill is going to be a medium size hill. It's going to curve and go up and over. Next, the next hill is going to be the tallest hill. So it's going to go up from the first hill over and down and then stop. Try to stretch it so it's almost at the end of the paper, but not quite. You guys are doing a great job. Finally, I will start my last hill on the edge of the second hill, but then I'm going to scoot my pencil up just a bit. That way it's going to be interesting. And then I just curve my line up and over and off the page. You guys are doing great. What do you think we should add in our sky? I agree. Let's add some clouds. All a cloud is, is just a curved U upside down, and then it travels around the sky. I've made two U's connected together. That's the start of my cloud. And then I just keep on doing the same shape, moving around, a little bit to the right as I go. That way I have my nice fluffy cloud. Yours does not have to look like mine. Whichever way you made yours will be amazing. Well, I don't want my cloud to just be out there in the sky all hanging out by itself, super bored. Let's make another cloud on the other side, but this time not exactly in the same 
height or the same size. So I'm going to go down a little from my hills and a little bit over and I'm going to make a smaller cloud. I'm going to do it the same way I did the last one and upside down U, the letter U, and then I'm going to continue on curving around towards the right, making my upside down U that turns into a U, that turns into a U going to the left. This one turns into a C going the wrong way <laughs> and back around to the top. Well, I think we have most of our basis for our back, background for our landscapes. We are celebrating Earth Day, and we know with a landscape, there is a background, a middle ground, and a foreground. What objects are in the background? Did you raise your hand before Miss Myers called on you? That's right. The clouds and the mountains are in the background. What is in the foreground? That means the objects closest to us. That's right. It's the sea kelp, the seaweed, and the sea floor. We have the waves of the ocean and the rolling hills as the middle ground. And now let's put some trees in the middle ground. Since this is at the beach, I say we should put some palm trees. I'm gonna start over here on the left side. I'm going to make two parallel lines, remember those lines again, that start from the middle of my space here and touch my rolling hill line. And the lines are slightly curved or angled to the right. I'm going to do the same thing right next to them, but this time the lines are going to be a little bit longer. Just do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now here's the tricky part, the top of the palm tree. Oh boy, watch first. I'm going to take the letter V and stretch it out and open it up real wide, right above my two lines. Do you guys see that? And then I'm gonna curve in with two other lines that kind of make it like a stretched out V. And then I've got a curve out. Back in. And now I just go crazy connecting the lines. If you can find another way that's easier for you and makes your palm trees interesting, go for it. You don't have to make yours exactly like mine. Just do the best you can. Second one, I've made that stretched out V above the two parallel lines so I could fit it in. And then I'm going to curve it over, go out and around, and then I just make these sharp V lines to make my palm tree top. You guys are doing amazing. Over here on the other side, I think I'm just gonna have one tree because I have so many over here, but you could put two if you like. And I'm gonna have this one curve towards the left and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, the outstretched V. I pull the lines in and then I just make a V all around the best I can. 
Sometimes people like to put little coconuts on theirs. You could do that if you want. Totally up to you. I said I was going to only put three, but I feel like I could almost fit another one there, right? So if you feel like you want to put one more, you can. Let's go to our foreground. I'm going to make a curved, stretched letter C. And then on the end, I'm going to make the little tail of the fish. An eye and a little smile. Don't forget your bubbles. <laughs> he could go either way or she could go either way. It doesn't really matter. Next, I might make a little crab in the water here. A circle and then legs that come out. I think crabs have six legs. Two little eyes there, two little bumps. A little happy crab. All right, people, we are ready. Miss Meyer's class for getting ready to use our oil pastels. You guys have done absolutely amazing. Miss Myers, this might be the time for you to go ahead and stop the video. Go around and check to see if our friends like have their do? art where they would like it. Okie doke, let's get started. First, we're actually gonna color from the top and work our way down. I'm gonna pull this down just a smidge. I'm gonna start with my light blue pastel if you don't have light, that's okay. And instead of trying to color the whole thing super solid, I'm going to actually color it with the side of my pastel nice and light because I'm actually going to blend my white pastel later on. You do not have to go back and trace these in a dark color because all our clouds, our trees, and everything else. We're going to trace that at the end with a black oil pastel. Or, Miss Myers, you can choose to have the students trace this with a black marker beforehand, but I'd rather see it with a pastel. Lightly color in with the side of your pastel your light blue. Don't worry about those clouds. We will get those clouds a little bit later. Don't forget not to color the clouds. You're coloring around the clouds. <laughs> if you have an opportunity to have a light and a dark green, that would be awesome too. But if you don't, that's fine. I'm actually going to throw in this darker green for my palm trees but now I'm going to take my lighter green and I'm going to lightly color over my hills I'm not coloring really heavy yet because we're going to be blend something called blending we're going to do that a little bit later I'm going to color with what's called the contour I'm going the same way the hills go so the hills are left to right, I'm going to color left to right. Long sweeping strokes. I'm not worried about making it perfect. I'm just doing the best I can. And also don't forget, if you color somewhere you do not want to color, there's nothing you can do about that. These are all pastels. They do not erase. Color right up here to the top because we're going to be blending this all in anyway. So I'm not coloring super heavy. I'm kind of coloring light. Not too light, but not too heavy either.
Next, I'm going to color in my palm tree trunks. I'm using the brown and I'm doing the same thing I did before. I'm coloring with the contour of the image. That means, contour just means where the line goes. It's a fancy word. And so if it's going up and down vertically, then I'm coloring up and down vertically. I'm gonna take my dark green and color in the tops of my palms the best that I can. This part I would actually do nice and solid because I might not be blending too much over with my oil pastels. There we go. Just do the best you can. Remember, we're gonna be blending all that in just a bit. Next, I think I have room to add the dark green. If you don't have dark green for this part, you could do a little bit of the brown and the regular green. So I'll say that again. If you don't have dark green, if you don't have two different types of greens, you can do the regular green here and a little brown on top. That would make it very interesting and it would look really good. Look really good. Well, we're finally to our ocean. So I'm gonna take my dark blue. Oops, before I do that, I totally forgot about our little colorful friends. So I'm gonna color my fish orange because the California state fish is orange, a Garibaldi fish, and my little happy crab. I'm gonna color that crab too. People live in all types of communities and one community that people live in, like where we live, is near the beach. Now that you've got those colored in, let's go ahead and lightly color in our ocean. Yes, I colored over the bubbles. I'm gonna go back to the bubbles later on. I'm not worried about coloring over my bubbles. You guys are doing great. And I'm gonna color very lightly over my sea kelp as well, because I'm gonna come back with my green pastel and fill all that in. Maybe put a little water here too. Last part I'm gonna color is the sea floor. The seafloor on mine is green, and I'm gonna press heavy this time, because when I add the white, it's really going to stand out. This time I'm pressing very heavy with my pastel. I'm gonna go around and get all my little parts And I am going to keep that going. All right, now that we have everything colored in, it is time to have some fun with our blending colors. 
Our blending colors are going to be the light blue and the white. I'm gonna set all my other colors aside for now. And this time I'm gonna start from the top and work my way down once again. Sometimes you can turn your paper if you need to so your hands don't get really grubby, but I like to just kind of work from the top and be mindful of what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna take my white and color really heavy on top of my blue. Look at that, it is starting to look so much like paint. It is looking really blended. I'm gonna avoid my clouds because those can stay nice and white. Just taking that white pastel and blending it across my sky is turning that sky into nice blended colors. So pretty and so fun. How fun is that? There you go. Looking good. Next, at the top of my my mountain, I'm going to add a nice dark light blue line. Why do I still feel like it's not hot enough? I don't know. <laughs> and then I'm going to color it in. I'm going to blend it in with the white. The white on top of this green will make it very interesting. You can even blend over the palm trees. Wherever you see that light green, that's where you're going to want to blend with your oil pastel. Very nice. Remember how I said we were also going to blend with the light blue? So this area here, I'm going to color it over with the light blue, the part that's underneath our palm trees. And that's going to make this ground area very dark. And then as soon as I color it over with that light blue, I'm going to go back with my white and really blend that in. Boy, your hands are getting a workout, aren't they? <laughs> oh, good grief. That is okay. It's good to get our hands a workout. And then finally, I'm going to do the same thing with my ocean. I'm going to color with the pastel left to right and blend it in. I can avoid those little fish and crabs if I want to. Or I can blend those in as well. It's totally up to you. My last step is if you have a black pastel you can go over remember that very beginning center line we had I would go over that with the edge of the pastel I would also go over the line between the grass area and my ocean I would trace my seaweed and if my fish were big enough or whatever I decided to put in the water, I would trace those as well. Remember those bubbles? <laughs> if your palm trees are big enough, you can trace those too. Sometimes we make the palm trees so small, we can't trace them. They will just have to be what they are and that is okay. I'm going to go over here to the other side and do the same thing 
with my palm trees. I'm going fast, but you guys can go slow. Finally, I'm going to go over this big hill line, the mountains that we have here in the background. A little like there. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trace over the line of my clouds. Nice and fluffy. You can also add a seagull too if you want. Whatever you like. Well, happy Earth Day to all of my friends in Miss Meyer's class. You guys are absolutely amazing, and I'm so glad we had this time together. Stay creative and have fun.